Hello everyone, I'm Alon the Cookie Dragon, often known as Chef Noriak, over on Wildstar on the Entity server of Dominion Side. I'm here today to talk about one of my favorite add-ons in this great game, the Katya Builder Toolkit. This is an amazingly powerful housing helper add-on that effectively replaces the default UI housing toolbar that's in-game and fixes a lot of different bugs in the way as well too. For this first video here that I'm going to make, and please bear with me, this is one of the first videos I've really ever made, uh, whether they're in this method, um, I'm going to be going over some of the features and giving a general overview of the Katya program. In future videos, I'll be going into how to use some of these a little more um, exactly, and we'll be going into some deeper details and showing some of the different tricks um, that there are with the Katya Builder Toolkit as well, too. To get started with it, once you've downloaded it, uh, whether it's via you know, Curse Client or uh, one of the different sites that are out there, uh, you have it installed into Wildstar. You'll just type in slash Katya, that's K-A-T-I-A, -A, uh, there, and it'll pop up with this little uh, thing that we've got over here on the right. Uh, and you see there's a lot of different buttons here uh, with it, some that'll look familiar and some not so much. I'm going to just uh, walk through the different here. This is the main base window. And we have the copy slot, which this is actually super important here. Um, we'll get into more details of that later because that actually responds to everything else around here. And it's almost the basis for everything that's going on. Uh, you have T, which refers to transform, R for rotation, and S for scale. Uh, those are also useful there because you can... Um, determine what is recorded uh, when you hit the copy button. Uh, also very useful. Uh, you have the copy button, which is exactly as it says. If you select a piece of decor somewhere and you hit copy, um, it will put that piece of data into the uh, there for you. Uh, in the case of uh, paste, it will again paste that data, uh, which is the position, rotation, and scale um, to whatever you have selected at current. So if I selected that block over there, um, for example, and hit paste, oh, it would be at the exact same spot as the other one now. But I don't really want that at the moment. So I'm going to just hit escape, and it goes back to how it was before. Now there, you have clone, which is actually kind of how it sounds. Um, if you have something in the copy here, in the case copy slot 1, happens to be that rock. If I clone it, uh, then I will have another one appear, which we'll do that in a little bit. Um, crate is exactly how it sounds. Y you send a piece of decor back into your crate. Uh, there's uh, Also, if you hold shift, it will crate all children. Children refers to linking, um, which is a very, very useful tool um, that I make extensive use of. Uh, place uh, uh, is place here, just because wherever you have it. It's actually very useful, especially when you're putting new stuff out from the housing vendor, because occasionally the housing vendor has a bug where it doesn't show you the place button. The Katya button will override that, um, so you don't even uh, need to worry about that. And parent. This is super useful, because if you have linked objects uh, there, and you're not sure where the parent object is, that's the one that will move all the linked objects. If you click on that, um, it will find the parent for you. Super useful tool. Um, down here is a little more advanced stuff. The from and to are related to the diff and average um, here, uh, which we'll get into more uh, details later on. These actually refer to copy slot information up here. Uh, in the case of diff, uh, it's the difference uh, between the from and to um, in this case here. Um, meaning if you had like, you know, two pieces of wall um, with a, a, a space between them and you use the diff button, on the third piece, the third piece would move and change the difference between the two. Very useful for staircases, very useful for doing for very straight walls um, as well too. It can make it so that you only have to do a little bit of work and then the diff tool can do the rest for you. Super, super useful. It also comes into really big play for making spiral staircases, which we'll get into in another video. We have our average as well, which actually is exactly like it says. Um, you take two um, information, so like in a copy slot one and copy slot two, and it will put an object that you have selected in the average between the two. And yes, this kind of includes not just position, but also size and rotation as well, too. 
So very useful for having things very mathematically accurate um, and eye-pleasing there as well. Oh, it's kind of like having a, if you don't want a picture off-centered on your wall, you want it exactly, you know, halfway in between points, um, the average tool can make sure that you've got that. Autolink comes into play using the target button. Um, the target button uh, is such that if you click on something while it's selected, you'll have other things turn blue. Um, this is actually very important because this means it's selected and anything in Katya that turns dark blue when you have it, something targeted is affected by what you have targeted. This is very important for when we get to other windows oh, here. And then we've got all down here are just little bug fixes. The fixed chairs not needed nearly so much nowadays uh, with it there, but any interactables and stuff, it will make it so that they are properly um, interactable and that they um, deal with things such as um, it used to be an issue where um, though they did finally fix it you if you sat on a chair half the time you would sit backwards you would like be sitting off the chair and stuff it just looked really funny um, with it but the, uh, but you could actually fix the chairs by just giving them a little bit of a twist uh, in the game and this would actually do that for you um, they're fixed links um, this is a uh, if you have linked things that cause your client, client to crash, I haven't run into this in quite a while um, with it there, but it's still there. Um, and ghosts, uh, if you have decor that can't be selected, um, again, I don't run into this very often nowadays, but it's still here. I'm sure some people do occasionally do that. Um, all right, let's look at the other little uh, windows that we have here uh, as well. Decor editor, this is the other window that you're probably going to spend a lot of time in there. This will basically show your XYZ coordinates, which is where things are on here. And then your yaw, pitch, and roll uh, as well, too. You've got, this is the linking button. If you have something targeted, oh, look, it turns nice dark blue there. Um, and that means that it is ready to be linked. Um, it will actually be linked to whatever you happen to have selected in the target uh, there. So if I selected something else, I hit this button. Hey, what do you know? They are now linked together. Um, so, very nice and simple like that. Turn off the target for now, though. Oh, there's it. Um, you have scale, which is exactly what it is. Now, in the default UI, um, the uh, the slider only goes up to a max scale of 8. Um, it, but for Katya, you can make it go up as high as you want. You can type in into the default UI higher numbers, but the actual slider only goes up to 8. Um, one thing of note, too, with Katya, um, the way she's built this, which is really great, um, is... Uh, if you mouse over things, it'll tell you specifically how much uh, uh, things will change. Shift and the button press is always the smallest increment. A base press, which means nothing is pressing down, will do a moderate. Um, you could do a large increment with control, and alt will do a huge increment. And this is pretty standard with all the Katya stuff. Uh, there, so. uh, down here, you have um, some different um, open world movement uh, there. Uh, in this case, what this does is everything follows an exact, like 90 degree, as I like to say, um, X, Y, Z axis there. Uh, things don't change as the object moves. Um, this is what I tend to use because it's what was in the game for the longest. They only more recently added to the game object-oriented movement. And this will actually, the orientation of the, the sliders and everything will change with the object. Um, also very useful. I actually tend to switch between both of them a lot, but I do a lot of my actual building on a 90 degree angle. So I use the world a good bit, but when I need to switch things around a little bit, sometimes the facing of the object is such that it's a lot easier to just slide over the object using object. Drag is kind of the default UI um, there, which basically you move things around. It'll be based on the, the base of whatever you've got it on. Um, whether there, It's useful, especially when first placing objects. Oh, there's over here are some other tools these are of course for up and down motion um, this will shift things around the yaw and the pitch um, with it there and this will be for your or this is the yaw pitch and roll over here and then this is for actual X Y Z movements over here and again same default of you know larger increments with control and um, alt and smaller with just your base uh, hitting and shift uh, and over here, uh, this is the, um, also for located, you know, selected decor, uh, it can actually, um, as well, to point a line to it and stuff, so it's actually useful. It's not so much, uh, like, right like that. Um, less needed so often when you're um, already, get, can see it blinking and that kind of stuff, but useful other times. 
All right, we have our set manager here. This is a super, super powerful tool here. Um, this is a, one of those tools that can get you into a lot of trouble if you're if you're not careful with it, but at the same time can make your work so much easier. Um, we'll go into details a little bit later on in a separate video uh, for this one here. Um, you have uh, the decor finder, also a super useful tool because this you can actually, um, you know, if you're trying to look for your, your four pillars that you have on there or you're looking for a particular plant that you know exists on your plot, you could type in the name and it will find it for you. Oh, they're there. So, like, I know this is going to come up with lots. Of, oh, hey, we got lots of rocks on this plot. What do you know? Um, whether they're and you click on the item and boom, there it goes. It says there's a swirly rock over there, and we got a gray rock step over here. Um, whether they're and everything like that. Uh, they're there. And of course, you can just do it blank, and it'll do the whole entire plot. Now, one of the neat things is if you have something targeted over here, you notice that there's a little thing that turns dark blue again. Um, that right there will say, uh, it will link everything to the targeted that is in the decor finder. Again, very useful and at the same time pretty dangerous um, with it there. After all, you don't necessarily want your whole entire plot linked to that single rock over there because um, that <laughs> could potentially be very, very bad. So just be careful when you press that. We're going to turn that off so I don't accidentally do that because um, there's not an undo feature, unfortunately, uh, at least not until Carbine adds one. Um, uh, that so, um, the cat has probably got the closest to an undo feature in the fact that you can use sets to re basically record uh, how your uh, setting is. All right, then we have um, a plot finder tool. This is also very useful. This can actually it'll go through searching for different terms and stuff. So you can actually type in, for example, um, I'm going to use village here, and it's going to start searching. You can see as basically going through and hey it's popping up these different names so it's not necessarily looking for player names but it's actually looking for housing title names as well too oh there's so a get super useful tool um, for exploring places the decor shopper um this one is a little more uh, advanced here and it's kind of fun i don't really take proper use of it um as much as i i should um there so oops i hit the wrong button um but uh, let's see Let's see if this even works. Uh, I think I, I started a scan there, so well. Anyways, what it actually does is it can actually look through basically the whole entire game files, um, just about. And um, using you first, you hit the scan button. It'll scan all four thousand some available objects um, there, and it will bring them into the program. And you could type in you know certain details and stuff, and it'll search through it, and you can actually see where the decor is, and it can coordinate with Jabbit Hole, which is a great program for looking up where you can find stuff in the game uh, there very easily uh, and that way you can uh, do your shopping and know where to get stuff interactables this is a very advanced tool and i'm not going to touch this till much later uh, things uh, there and then of course there's different options as well too you can turn transparencies on for different things i like that for decor editor because i have that up the most often uh, there in particular and it tends to be a little more forward for me but you can move all this around and everything as well um, but that is my initial starting video here for Katya, just to give a little rundown of the tools, show a couple of things. Uh, we will be definitely getting into a little more advanced stuff later on, but we just walked through everything here. And so this is uh, Chef Noriak uh, talking with you again, and we will see you again soon in a future video.